Over the past decade, neuroscientists have been making great discoveries in the area of brain function and development. For many teachers, this new information is changing the way they teach in the classroom. One, two, three. Believe it or not, these grade 8 students at R.I. Baker Middle School are studying for an upcoming social studies test on the Renaissance. If they score a goal, they don't get a point until they answer a review question. Boom, they get three points for that, that was a tough one. It's a way to get them active and engaged. I don't know, I don't see too many kids like this during study review games um, wanting to get the question right and really struggling to fight for it. So I think it just kind of gets them energized and engaged and uh, makes them want to participate in class, which is something that doesn't happen all the time in social. This game is an example of how teachers are adapting their practice to make learning more effective. It springs from the mountain of research coming from neuroscientists researching the complexities of the brain and how people learn. We now know that learning is a science. Janice Baylor is a learning support teacher at R.I. Baker. In the last decade, decade and a half, we have the ability to look at people's brains while they are working, functioning. We can see where the activity is. We can see the process of what's happening when they're learning. So really, because it, it's now something that we can measure and we can see what's happening, it moves into the realm more of science. Janice says there is amazing potential in student learning when teaching strategies are research-based and endorsed. Now, teaching remains an art because what we're trying to do is manipulate and control an environment that will best influence how that particular brain is going to react to learning stimuli. So learning is a science, teaching is an art, that is guided by the science of learning. Through research, educators are gaining awareness of the conditions needed for learning to take place. And teachers are tailoring their lesson plans accordingly. The importance of activity, exercise and nutrition, building relationships, understanding attention spans and how the memory works, these are some of the key principles for effective learning. Probably the most important element of learning from a teaching perspective is transfer. Until a student can take the information you've given them, work with it in their own unique way, and then produce or create or apply it in a way that is different, I don't think that we've really had learning. We call that transfer. Teachers are always looking for new ideas, new ways to improve their practice. Increasingly, they're looking to science to find the answers to effective teaching. It's like a flashlight that helps guide us forward on a dark night. It makes our focus clearer and brighter. We know where we're at and a better idea of where we want to get there. And the research gives us ideas on how to get there.